Okay, let's see how this works, you guys. I would mentioned uh, today that I, my tablet broke, so I um, haven't used my document camera, and I know there's a delay with what I'm saying and what I'm actually writing. So uh, hopefully this won't get too bad. I notice if I keep them relatively short, they work out a little bit better. So um, sometimes, you know, uh, like a three minute video, it's not so discom <laughs> disjointed for lack of a better term. It's it's a little more accurate as far as what I'm writing and what, I'm, what you're hearing. If it gets to be like 10 or 15 minutes, then it's not so bad. Let's see here. So anyway, 7-2. Um, I'm gonna, before we do 7-2, uh, I'm gonna actually give you guys some a quick lesson on finding common denominators and why you even need to do that. So, uh, you know, so, you know, for example, um, if I had a, if I had a fraction, let's say uh, two tenths um, uh, plus uh, five tenths, I could add those together because they have the same denominator. And so how would I do that? Well, the denominator doesn't change. The two and the five, I would just add those together and that would become seven tenths. Um, hopefully you guys remember that. I'll give you another example. What if I had, uh, let's say three fifteenths uh, plus, um, um, eight fifteenths. Could I add those together? Yeah, I sure can. The denominator's the same. It's 15. That doesn't change. 3 and 8 is 11, so it's 11 fifteenths. All right. Now, we get into problems when we have, um, when we have fractions we're adding and they don't have the same denominator. So, for example, what if I had 3 tenths? I'm using a darker pen here so it shows a, a little bit better. And I'm adding, I don't know, let's say two fifths, and I'm adding those together. Can I do that? No, I, I can't. The denominators, not the same. They need to be the same. And so, um, I mean, sort of the old-fashioned way, and the way you might end up doing a lot of these. I just kind of line them up uh, vertically, okay. And I need to come up with a number, a denominator that they both go into. Well, um, if you look at 5 and 10, and you're trying to think, well, what number could both of them go into? Well, 10 would go into itself, so we can use 10. Does 5 go into 10? It certainly does. So 10 goes into 10 once, and 1 times 3 is 3. 5 goes into 10, 5 goes into 10 twice. And 2 times 2 is 4. Now we have the same denominators. They're both 10s. So what do we do? We just add the numerator. So 3 and 4 is 7. So the answer is 7 tenths. If I wrote it like this, it, you know, like 3 tenths. And then uh, plus, what did we convert it to? 4 tenths. And the denominator stays the same, three and four is seven, seven tenths, and you can see that they're the same thing. So that's what they're asking you to do in, in this section, finding common denominators. And they show you a couple different ways, and I'll go ahead and go over those examples um, tomorrow in, in that lesson. But this one, I just want you to practice finding common denominators and equivalent fractions. They also talk about equivalent fractions. Well, what are equivalent fractions? Well, I talked about that uh, briefly uh, today in today's lesson. So if I wanted to know an equivalent fraction of one half, um, I could say two fourths. Notice I just doubled each one. One doubled is two, two doubled is four. Another equivalent fraction, like how about five tenths, okay? Five goes into 10, how many times? Twice. Two goes into four, how many times? Twice. One goes into two, how many times? Twice. What's another equivalent fraction? I don't know, how about um, 20 over 40? How many times does 20 go into 40? Twice. These are all equivalent fractions. And sometimes if you have to find the common denominator, that's one way to do it. You could just start writing equivalent fractions till you come across one. But the, the main idea is, let me, let me uh, write down, how about one quarter uh, plus, let's say, um, one third. 
Okay, so I need to find a common denominator. All right, I need to find something that both um, four and three would go into. What number would four and three go into? Four and three. Well, um, if you think about it, uh, 12 might have come into your head, and that would have been a good choice. 4 goes into 12 three times, 3 goes into 12 four times. So 12 would be the common denominator. And then, so how do I solve that? Well, 3 goes into 12 four times. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times uh, 1 is 3. So now we have um, common denominator, 12. So we have the numerator, 3 and 4, that's 7. So the answer would be 7 twelfths. That's what I'm adding up. 3 plus 4, that's 7. Um, how about... Uh, Uh, how about something like one third plus um, five fifteenths? I wanted to add those up. Well, I can't. I don't have a common denominator. So again, I like to set things up vertically, but you don't have to do that. What's a common denominator? What number would three and fifteen go into? Well, it's kind of convenient because 15 will go into itself. And if you know your times tables, you know that three also goes into 15. How many times? Three goes into 15 five times. And five times uh, one is five. 15 goes into 15 once, one times five is five. Now what? You add them up, five and five is 10, 10 fifteenths, which can be reduced. Did you guys learn anything about reducing in fourth grade? I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I wasn't there. So um, this actually reduces to two thirds. What I did is I looked for a number that would fit into both of them. And five goes into 10 twice. Five goes into 15 three times. So it's two thirds. So um, finding a common denominator. All right, here's what I want you guys to do. Find a common denominator for these problems. Let's see, one half plus two thirds. Okay. Uh, number two, find a common denominator for two thirds um, plus, uh, I don't know, how about five sixths? Number three, um, how about um, uh, six sevenths? plus 10 over 21. What's the common denominator there that you could use? How about number four? Now, again, if you know your times tables, it makes this whole process so much easier. How about um, um, three twelfths plus um, um, five Twenty-fourths. That's a five. Oh, that was awful. Five twenty-fourths. That's number four. Number five. Um, how about how about one half plus one ninth? What's the common denominator for those? Number six. One half plus um, three eighths. Number seven. How about um, three fourths plus um, one fourth? Hmm. You don't need to find a common denominator there. So what could you do? Number eight. How about um, oh five six plus? Um, about one fifth. All right. So you don't have to. You don't have to add these. I just want you to tell me what the common denominator is for each one. All right. Um, 
I'm looking at 7-2, seeing if there's, and I know that's what you got to do in 4 through 11 down here. So yeah, pretty simple lesson. Uh, go ahead and just find the common denominator for 1 through 8 there. And then um, um, add these. Let's do let's do uh, three more here. Nine, or I don't know how many more. How about uh, one third plus um, one third plus uh, five sixth. Again, that's a five. Okay. Um, actually, solve that one. Solve numbers uh, 9 through 12 all right 9 10 how about one half plus uh, 5 8 equals that's 10 11 I don't want to make I'm going to finish this here pretty quick here how about uh, 3 sevenths plus um, uh, 6 over 21. And then finally, uh, number 12, the last one, how about um, 3 fourths plus 2 thirds. Okay. All right. There it is. Numbers 1 through 12. And 9, 10, 11, 12 actually solve. And then the others, just give me a common denominator that you would use. All right, that's it. I'm going to end this video. And hopefully it's not too um, uncoordinated as far as the, the sound.